Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to our second episode of Talking Sport. Today, we're going to focus more on open water swimming. It's a new Olympic sport. It starts in 2008. Unfortunately, till now, a part of Usama Maluli, we didn't see any Arab swimmer in the, in the podium of the Olympic Games. We want to know why. We want to see how to become an open water swimmer. Today, we have with us one of the best open water swimmers in the world. Uh, he has one of the best swimmers of uh, open water swimmer of the world, Ana Marcella. Today, we invite with us Coach Fernando Possenti. Coach Fernando, hello and welcome to our podcast. Hello, my friends. Yeah, it's a pleasure for me to be here and to try to help MENA region and especially the younger swimmers to become a, a good and a very successful athlete. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Fernando, when we see your career, we see a lot of achievement, five-time FINA achievement awards, uh, four title of FINA open water marathon, open water swim, uh, gold medal in the Pan American 2019, also uh, the best coach in Brazil in all individual discipline. When we see that, we see like one of the best coach in the world. So no one better than you to talk about open water. So... Fernando, today I want to ask you something about the um, training of open water. A lot of people asking about sea swimming and open water, but they don't know the difference between training for open water and training for swimming. Swimming the most longer distance is 15, 1500, but in open water we find 25k, 10k and 5k swim. Is there any difference? Is there any training method? If you can give us some insights some uh, what you do during the week what's your training please for sure well there's two things that i like to to say first of all the the, the venue the place that you train yes some people think uh, okay how i can do open water if i born in for example sweden it's okay. too cold there's there's no way to to train there Yes. I believe that uh, for young swimmers, yes. it's nice if you have the opportunity to go to more competitions and to, to go to different venues for them to receive that uh, information of different ways to swim in the sea or in the lake or in the river or whatever. But the thing is, the truly is, the high level swimmers like Ana Marcella, we yes. train 100% in the pool. We don't go to, uh, to the sea. We have it here in Rio, in Brazil. We have good yes. temperature. We yes. have nice beaches here, nice places, but we don't. Why? Because you have all control that you need as a coach in the pool. Frequency control with, without you know, any influence of uh, external factors. You have um, the, the whole control of uh, lactate, for example, glucose, uh, pace, including pace. You can have the best, uh, you know, those those famous watches that we have. I don't want to see the brand to, to talk yeah. about the brand, but you know what I'm talking about. You can have yeah. the best one, but you, you need to, to have the whole control of the training in your hands. So don't worry if you are in a country that you don't have space or venues to train because the high level athletes train 100% in the pool, even doing open water. For sure, if you are training the juniors, it's nice for the juniors to gain that experience, to, okay. to realize how it's going to be to compete in the sea. So I suggest more competitions. It's one thing that for men a region, they, it's, it's a little bit different than the, in America or in Europe. It's yes. the number, the, quant the quantity of competitions that you put your junior in. Okay. Because if the junior competes more, he gains more experience and he knows how to decide in a moment of the race what to do. Of course. This is one, one, one tip. The second thing, this is one thing. The second thing I would like to say, it's uh, about the difference that you, you mentioned uh, between uh, pool training for 1500, for example, and open water training for those long distances. The main thing in training is that the pool swimmer, we, we train the pool swimmer, swimmer to, in English, it's easier including to, to explain it, to keep the pace. 
Okay. So the guy, if you look at 1500 race, okay, the first first lap uh, they start from the block. So, okay, maybe the top guy 57. Okay. Then you see 13 paces of 59 or 13 paces of 58. So keep the pace in the level of his uh, threshold. Okay. 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 And then, for sure, the last hundreds, uh, a sprint, and you arrive in your hand, so a little bit less. But we basically train the, the pool guy to or the pool girl to keep the pace. Okay. And the important thing in open water is to train the athletes to know how to change the pace. Okay. And why they need to change the pace. Because, of course, you go for a competition, you go for a race with your own strategy. But you have to understand that the other athletes' strategy will impact you very hard so if they move or if they change the pace during the race you have to be able to do that with the the less energy expanded you you, you can okay Okay. you understand so you have to to do that movement with the group because once you you miss the group you miss the pack you miss the the drift you are alone You, you 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 probably miss the top 10 of the race so first thing in open water is never miss the pack or never be out of that pack. But to be in that pack, you have, of course, save energy, have a good technique, have a good um, efficient technique, not, not only good, but efficient technique to, of course, to don't spend more energy than you, you need, but be able to change your pace, to change your rhythm. This is the biggest difference in the, when you get structure the training sessions for open water. You have to think, this guy must go from A1 for aerobic one to aerobic three, for example, in a minute. Okay, okay, and, okay. And, and, and then the athlete must change the frequency of strokes, must change the, the pace that he, he is very, and, and then come back to the, the other pace because once you are in the pack, okay, let's enjoy, you know, it's easier to swim in the feet. Let's enjoy that position in the pack. So that ability to change the pace is the, for me, is the biggest difference between training pool swimmers and open water swimmers. Okay, okay. So to resume, we have two main factors for open water swimmers. First of all, is to have the ability to change pace, which is different from swimming. And the second thing is yeah. to have an efficient technique. Technique yeah. is also very important in open water. For 25K, for 5K, it's, a, it's one of the factors to succeed in this, in this discipline. So if you can give us a weekly training, how do you train for open water? Do you have like dry land session or do you have like long, long training session? How, how do you do it with animals, for example? It's, it's, like, it's, it's not, uh, I, I, I love this question, sorry, because it's yeah. not to train more, it's to yeah. train better. Exactly. When, yeah. I, when I was talking uh, about efficiency, especially efficient, efficiency in the strokes, it's like uh, when Anna arrived, maybe 2013, okay. she used to do, uh, I would do a, a set, uh, our, yes. how can I say that in English? Uh, the, the set that we used to do every single day in the end of the training session to okay. see if the technique keeps good after the whole impact of the intensity. So it's like 850s, not a big deal, okay? It's okay. 850s is starting, starting in 45 seconds. Okay. Easy for Simple, yeah. high level swimmers. Yeah. But when she arrived in 2013, she okay. used to do 35 seconds with 38 strokes. Okay. Nowadays, uh, I, she did uh, last Tuesday, two days ago, Yes. The 850s in the end of the training was 32 seconds with 32 strokes. Amazing. So, so this is this is what we're talking about with efficient technique. If you can keep the pace of 32, but with six less strokes than you were, were doing 35, imagine in 10 Ks how much energy you save. Yeah, it's a big energy. It's this, a, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a big energy, but it's a, it's something that. Uh, Okay, you can call me uh, boring or whatever, but athletes, my athletes do it every single training and they try to improve or you do in less time or you do 31 next time or you do 31 strokes. Okay, so so yeah, so it's like saving a lot of energy like that, going fast but with less energy. 
which is the secret yeah. of uh, of all sports, by the way. Okay, so to move to move for the for for the next question, uh, Fernando, I want to ask you. How do you detect open water swimmers? Is there any criteria? Is there like morphology, uh, strength, uh, special uh, characteristics to, to detect open water swimmers? For example, for age group swimmers, how do you detect one? Yeah, as you said, it's a very, uh, how we, we can call it, young discipline in, yes. in Olympics. Yes, we started exactly. in 2008. Yes. So most of our swimmers uh, come from the pool. So okay. uh, especially 800 and 1500 swimmers. But yeah, you can, you can try to do some uh, small tests to identify them. Okay. For example, um, capacity of concent concentrate himself or herself for a long period. Yes. You know, sessions that uh, you need the athlete to be very concentrated for long periods. Okay. Why? Because in open water, if you miss concentration, in the moment that pack is moving, done. Okay. You're done. Okay. Okay. So this is my first point. Uh, um, so mental preparation. Be concentrate. So be mental strong. preparation. Yeah. Be strong okay. mentally. Yes. Of course, like to, to train hard and to train long sessions. You cannot think you were able to, to swim a 10K training 4K per session. It's, uh, it's usually normal for us. 80 from 70 to 90 Ks per week. Okay. okay. You asked me about our, our week. I can, I can give to you. We, we do 10 sessions per week. Okay. So Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, it's two sessions. Wednesday and Saturday, one session. Okay. So it's 10 sessions per week. Sunday uh, off. <laughs> we, yeah. we have to the rest. rest. Rest is part. Yeah. The rest is part yeah. of the training. Yeah. Yes. And uh, the gym, the, the physical part, the, the dry land, it's four days uh, per week. Also, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and, and Friday, because Wednesday they used to do a physiotherapy so, to yeah. recover. recover. And yeah. Saturday they, 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 they are free to stay with the family. And, and of course. That's it. So with, with 10 sessions per week, we used to do from 70 to 90 Ks. Okay. It's a volume for open water swimmers. The, yeah. There's countries that used to train more than this, yes. uh, like Italy, more than 100 cases per week. There's countries also that uh, train less than this, okay. but the average is it's around 70 to 90. And uh, I was talking about the, the one other important thing about mental preparation. It's the, to be not only concentrated in your strategy or what you are doing or your technique, but everything that happens around you. Okay. And uh, can, can, can I, 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 I tell you a, a story? It's a funny story. We can, yeah, yeah, of course. We can, we can, we can put in the, yes, of maybe course, we can, we can continue with the, the, the funny story yes, about please. Anna. Uh, but uh, that story can give us an idea of what I'm talking about. Okay. We were doing like uh, eight times 400s. Okay. In a short course, short course meters, it's uh, 25 meters. And uh, it, it's, it's, it's not uh, in exactly in the 150s or in 200s or 250s. Anytime she just turn around yes. on the, the backstroke position, yes. say hello, yeah. and then turn again and continue to swimming. Okay. And, and I was looking and what what is this girl are doing? It's what doing? it's insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I try to to find a, a how can I say that a, a exactly moment. So no, once was in the first fifties, and then was in the two hundred fifty, and then was in the three hundred. So why she is turning on back position during the set? So you are in the short course meters. You have to count until eight. Eight course, laps yeah, yeah. to finish for hundred. You yeah. have to 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 do the right pace. You have to do the right frequency. You have to be focused on the series. And she's turning, saying hello, and turning again. And I asked her, "Why why, why were you doing that?" And she answered me, "I'm saying hello to the airplane." Said, no way. <laughs> to the airplane? <laughs> why is that? We no no. We we work in a in an open pool in Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo okay. is the biggest city of South America. So each five minutes or each four minutes, there's an airplane that cross 
over okay. our pools. Oh my God. And I said, no, no way. And then five minutes later, she was counting laps, counting strokes, paying attention and hearing the sound of the airplane. And in oh the exact God. moment that the airplane crossed the pool, she turned, say hello to the airplane, turn again and continue to swimming. Oh my so God. she was with the attention. It's a funny story because but it looks like a, a it's, crazy it's, story, but she, she was paying attention in every single thing around her. Oh. And in the end of the set, the, 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 okay, the cherry of the cake, okay, in the yeah, end yeah, of yeah. the set, after saying hello to the airplanes like three, four, five times, in the end of the set, she looked to the, the boy in the lane, the, on the lane on, on her left, okay. looked to the boy and said, listen, the last one you did 350. You have to do 50 more. And the end of the funny story was that, the, you know, the, the boy said that the coach didn't realize that. Why you were saying that? I said, yeah, but I, I was counting your 400 also, and you have to do 50 more. Oh my so God. This, is a, it, this is an example. And this, is, this just happened. You know, I saw that. It was, was crazy because and when, you, when you saw her in the race, she, when, when she finished a race, for example, I asked her a feedback. Okay. And the feedback is also amazing because she's able to tell me, okay, in the third lap, the Australian girl do a movement from my right and go in front and do like a sprint and turn the buoy in on first. And the, the feedback is so rich of information. So detailed. Uh, so detailed. And why? Because she is concentrated and paying attention in everything that happens around. This is a characteristic that we have to train in our juniors to have a good open water swimmer um, in the future. That's why she's one of the best swimmer, open water swimmer of the world. That's why that's one of her characteristics. Yeah. She's very strong and very focused. So, but, but you know what happened with the juniors also? They what? miss the concentration and they miss the things, especially yeah. because of technology. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They, are, yeah, yeah, they are talking with you, but they are paying attention in the phone or in the, the app, the WhatsApp, the Facebook, the Instagram, or whatever. Waiting for a notification they, they are, or something, yeah. Uh, something. They are not focused in one thing and not paying attention that what matters around, you know? Exactly. This is exactly. one thing that we have to work with our journals. If, if I had to give you, to give you a tip, this is one of the, the tips. That's amazing. That's an amazing tip. Uh, I don't want to hold you more, uh, Coach Fernando, just to, to, to finish our talk. For coaches or swimmers who want to be in open water discipline, what can you advise them? What do you, uh, as, as an international and one of the best open water swimmers of the world, what can you tell them? For the coaches, especially, uh, don't be afraid to go to as many competitions as you can okay because you will you will bring you a lot of expertise and a lot of experience of uh, this discipline because each race is a different race mm -hmm. even osama meluli the olympic champion i saw him in cancun leading the pack and finishing 20 for 21st exactly so uh, it's 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 amazing how the race can change and how big swimmers can be in the in the back of the pack and you know it's uh, it's yeah. unpredictable this in a race there is unpredict most of the time is unpredictable as many competitions as you can go please do it for your own career as a coach i i i have my experience most talking with the other coaches but uh, especially to being in competitions this is my ad advice for coaches and for swimmers you know, dream small or dream big will give you the same, the same hard work to do. So why to, to, to dream small? Let's exactly. dream big. Exactly. Let's put your goals really high and go for them and work for them. And uh, don't, don't miss or don't lose your focus in your goals. Everything is possible. If you put your head on it, yeah. you, you, you can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can do it. As to, to, finish, to finish this conversa conversation, I know that the only medal missing for Anna is an Olympic medal. 
And now Tokyo is coming with all this situation around the world, with all this corona. I hope, I hope that she will get it this time and she will be like on the top of the podium of the Olympic Games in Tokyo 2021. Coach Fernando, thank you for, uh, for your insights today. Thank you for your advices. Hope to see you soon in Doha, in, uh, in the FINA yep. the water swim. And uh, let's, uh, let's, let's keep talking about open water and hope to have a, another Arab swimmer like Kusama Maluli on the top podium of the Olympic Games or even the World Championship run. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Fernando. It will be and nice. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you for inviting Thank you for inviting me. And uh, yeah, we'll be in Doha next month. I, I, I hope so. We are, we're doing everything that we can to, for that. And I hope to see more Arab swimmers also. It will be amazing to have a diversity of people doing our discipline and doing our sport very well. I hope so. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Coach. And uh, see you soon.